So now we're going to share a few key strategies for HACCP plan development with you. Maybe this is your first time through. Maybe you're developing a new plan at a new operation, or maybe it's time for a refresh on your current plan. So one of the things that you need to do is appoint someone to be the HACCP coordinator for the operation. That may be you, that may be somebody that you're working with. That person needs to be properly trained, they need to be knowledgeable. Yes, HACCP can be easy to understand, uh, but there are also some scientific principles at hand and there are some complexities to implementing a HACCP plan that it takes time to fully understand and really acknowledge and be able to apply to develop your plan. So there is a technical ability that's required for this person. Additionally, if you think about it, it's a team environment. We're working with other people in different departments, pulling them together toward a common goal. So there are interpersonal skills that are also required or needed on the part of this person to make sure that the HACCP process is effective, that you're working together, pull it, pulling this plan together as a team and implementing it daily out on the plant floor. So this person is going to provide guidance to the team, oversight, and fostering feedback from team members as well, not just driving things forward as an individual, but asking for input and taking into account the input of other people. The HACCP team itself needs to be multidisciplinary. We want to have people on the team from the operations side, from maintenance, sanitation potentially, maybe sales even, to talk to us about input from customers. So having a multidisciplinary team gives us a broad-based approach, gives us input on different aspects of things. For example, maintenance may understand how the equipment gets put together and how it works internally, while operations can tell us how it's actually used on a day-to-day -day basis. And quality may have a better idea of some of the trends and defects or customer complaints. And again, sales may be able to help with that as well. So a multidisciplinary team has a lot of benefits. And that's one of the requirements of HACCP. So the team develops the plan. They put it together based on the 12 principles of HACCP. Then they work together to implement it out on the plant floor. Initially, implementing the plan is a lot of work. And then from there on out, we maintain that implementation. We keep it going and keep it up to date and make sure people understand as we get new hires in, even people that have been around for a long time, the importance of the plan and sticking to it and making sure that it is maintained. And of course, on an ongoing basis, the team is going to help with identifying needed resources. Maybe there's a gap in our operation. Maybe there's a piece of equipment that's not operating optimally. There's a gap there that we've identified as a team and then we talk about it amongst ourselves and how best to address the gap and then we address the subject with management and we ask for resources if needed or ask for making a change to the way we operate or something like that. Now the first time through implementing a HACCP plan, a few things can help you out tremendously. First off, starting out with a limited scope is one of the things that's commonly recommended when we implement HACCP. What I mean by this is, you start with one operation, or one type of operation, rather than trying to implement HACCP for the entire production team and for all the production lines, all the processes. So you start with one operation and refine your approach and really figure out how you want to document things, how you want to do them, and then once you've implemented on that line and gotten it maybe 80%, 90% to what you really think it needs to be, then you can expand it to the rest of the operation line by line or area by area and really refine and perfect things on an ongoing basis. Fine tuning is gonna happen, of course, the first year, but even beyond that, on an ongoing basis, there are new expectations in the market, there are new regulations that come out, Customers will come in and tell us that they want us to do something a little differently, so we're constantly fine-tuning and keeping our plan up to date. And I can't emphasize enough, train, train, train your people. Keep people up to date. We want to avoid the initial training and then waiting until somebody fails to train them again. We don't want to retrain as a correction. We want to train constantly. 
We want to talk about things with our team in tailgate meetings, weekly, monthly meetings, uh, annual meetings as well, and make sure people are up to date and understand the latest and make sure that they're reminded of what they need to be doing. And where needed, of course, get help. Ask for outside help. Members of our team have been asked to come in and consult, do internal audits, and all kinds of other ways that we've helped operations. You can uh, ask a third party to come in and help you. You can get help internally from other departments that aren't currently involved. There are a lot of different ways that you can get resources. There are also extension agents at universities whose job it is to really assist and help with the food industry in terms of things like validating your plan, validating your controls, identifying research that's needed to justify your plan and to provide backup, basically. So another tip that I'd like to share with you is the way that you group your plans and your products. Sometimes an operation will have HACCP plans that have a common uh, couple of steps. As you can see on the uh, diagram there, we've got our primary process. Maybe there are 10 or 20 steps in our primary process that all of our products go through. It's a commonality, it's a commonality among all of them and operations will often have those same steps on five or eight or ten different HACCP plans that are duplicated. And the problem with this is you've got to keep them all up to date and maintained exactly the same way. So my recommendation would be where you're able to, just to have that documented in a single place, in a single flowchart, with a single hazard analysis. Then from there, as you branch off, maybe you have two different secondary processes. Document those. And then where you have final products that have unique processes, branch off and document those. But one of the important principles is to avoid duplication as much as possible because it just leads to inconsistencies and to lots of effort to keep things maintained. So separate products out where things are different. Things like a different type of packaging, a different moisture target, moisture level, type of processing that it goes through, or any other relevant factors for food safety. If items are the same in terms of food safety and processes, they can be grouped together. But where they differ, where they're different, separate them out into a different assessment, a different part of the hazard analysis, and look at them uniquely.